Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Looking at a page called Running Out of Time. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit under the gun here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this class that I promised you guys this morning. Um, since then, uh, this is what I've been working on. This is our um, revision to our clock face. Um, uh, we have been working on removing the eclipse. I'll go ahead and let you guys take a look at it. Um, start perusing it, making sure it is as accurate as we can get it. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to talk about uh, this class here. Now, I'm looking at my notes and I'm, I'm not going to worry about the order. I'm going to worry about speed here. Um, and so it's going to be a little bit out of order. We're going to be talking about dates. Okay, I'm just going to start with Revelation chapter 8. Now, in this chapter is where we hear about this uh, seventh seal being opened. Now, we hear about the seals um, and what they are in the third testament of the Bible. And we've done many classes on that, and I could, I could spend 15 minutes talking to you and explaining these seals. But what we understand is that this seventh seal opened in 1975. And maybe that's why it was that, you know, it was so important to get this done. Um, this inner circle here, that's what it shows us uh, right around in here. This 1975 um, is this particular Jubilee cycle and then the half hour of silence because um, an hour is 100 years. You span 100 years, but you're only going a half hour. So that takes us to 2024. And. This is the first time anybody's seen it done like this. Usually we do the math from 1457 BC when they crossed the River Jordan and count the Jubilees that way. Um, of course, remember to add the one because there is no year zero. But anyway, that's what John is talking about over here when he says this silence for the space of a half hour. We have to jump over to the um, Apocalypse of Abraham or the Testament of Abraham. One of them, I think it's the Apocalypse of Abraham to find out that a hour is 100 years. But anyway, the thing about it, this timing coincides with what we read over in the Epistle of the Apostles. Now, so I'm going to scroll all the way down here to about verse 17, where you see that the Apostles asked the Messiah clearly when he was coming back. He says, after how many years shall this come to pass? And when we when we look up above to find out what he's talking about, we see in verse 16, he says, the wings of the cloud shall bear me in brightness. The sign of the cross shall go before me. This is clearly talking about the Messiah and the return of the Messiah. And you know, when we get all the way back up to about verse 15, we see that this was during the last supper. Verse 15 starts talking about the uh, Passover meal and it goes on with the Messiah talking about how they would end up in prison and such. And we see partway through verse 15, they start talking about the marriage supper, that great festival that we're waiting for when we and our Messiah are supposed to be joined spiritually. Let me just read it. It says, and we said unto him, Lord, is it then needful that we should again take the cup and drink? He said unto us. Yea, it is needful until the day when I come again with them that have been put to death for my sake. This is talking about the angels that's supposed to be or the saints that's supposed to part the sky with the Messiah at the second coming. So it's clearly talking about the marriage supper here and the second coming. But we already know that, that they are to go hand in hand. But look at verse 16. It says, then said we to him. Lord, that which thou hast revealed unto us is great. Wilt thou come in the power of any creature or in an appearance of any kind? In that power or form wilt thou come? He answered and said unto us, Verily I say unto you, I shall come like the sun when it is risen, and my brightness shall be seen times the brightness thereof. The wings of the clouds shall bear me in brightness. Now, this is what we hear all over the scripture. So this is talking about the solar flare here. Now, I'm noticing this for the first time. 
um, the relationship but by what he's saying here when he says I shall come like the sun when it is risen and this is um, very familiar considering the other classes we did out of the keys of Enoch on the solar flare and how it would cause the great awakening I think these two are connected the rest of the verse says the wings of the cloud shall bear me in brightness and the sign of the cross shall go before me and I shall come upon the earth to judge the quick and the dead. So again, even though we may not be familiar with the epistle of the apostles, which this book is, we are very familiar with what is saying here um, and how his second coming will take place. But let's go on because we're back to verse 17. Which says, and we said unto him, Lord, after how many years shall this come to pass? So here, these apostles have the Messiah here at the Lord's Supper now. And they're questioning him about how long it would be before his second coming. Before this marriage supper. Before this solar flare. Before this pole shift. Before humanity is changed. He said unto us, when the hundredth part and the twentieth part is fulfilled. Now, this right here, we believe is the hundred and twentieth Jubilee. Just like what Abraham was told over there, we would only have a hundred and twenty years or a hundred and twenty parts or a hundred and twenty Jubilees. And when you understand the sacred calendar as taught by Enoch, getting it in the inner circles, you start to understand what he's talking about how all of this is on our father's sacred calendar and is ticking like a clock but let's go on it says that he's going to come between the Pentecost and the feast of unleavened bread so now here here is getting into the timing and for everybody who's going to say nobody knows the day or the hour yeah you absolutely don't know the day or the hour and you're not going to know it after the end of this video because you see the Messiah's answer He's coming when the hundredth part and the twentieth part is fulfilled. And that will be fulfilled at sunset on April the 9th. That's the part of the inner circle we've been working on to understand this Jubilee year in the year 2024. The thing about that Jubilee year 2024, it is the beginning of the 121st Jubilee. The end of the 120th Jubilee is April the 9th at sunset. Once the sun goes down on April the 9th, we start a whole new Jubilee cycle with the next Jubilee year being in the year 2073. Now, if you understand this, you see that we do have some more time before year one or the year 6001 which we're expecting the kingdom of heaven. We have a few years to go before then. But again, notice this part where it says between Pentecost and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, let's go get an older revision of that clock. This was Rev 12. It should work because what it shows us is we have Pentecost here and the Feast of Unleavened Bread up here. So we have all of these area to go between the Feast of Pentecost and the Unleavened Bread. But the thing about it, we've already made it this far. So according to the scripture, we only have until the Feast of Unleavened Bread. From now until the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But even the Feast of Unleavened Bread is too far because that goes past April 9th. So according to the Epistle of the Apostles, the Messiah must return sometime between now and April 9th. It says, when the hundredth part and the twentieth part is fulfilled between the Pentecost and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then shall the coming of my Father be. So that takes us back to Revelation chapter 8, where he's talking about the end of this half hour of silence, which is supposed to be followed by these seven angels being given these seven trumpets, which we read about down in about verse six, when they start to sound these trumpets. But before the sounding of the trumpets, before they start to sound, they're given the trumpets in verse two. But look what happens in verse three. It starts talking about another angel that came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. 
And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Now, this is an atonement day ceremony here. This is what Aaron did when he went into the Holy of Holies there on atonement day with the rope tied around his leg and all. And then in verse four, he's talking about the smoke of this incense. And then we see down there in verse five that this angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it to the earth. And then he says that there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So here you have this atonement day ceremony with this angel coming and casting this stuff down to the earth all before the trumpets start to blow. Now, the thing about the trumpets starting to blow if we go back in time to when they crossed the River Jordan, it also occurred during a Jubilee year, during the second month of the Jubilee year in the year about 1456 B.C. Well, the trumpets blew during that Jubilee year when the walls of Jericho fell. We see in Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 9 that we're supposed to sound the trumpet in the Jubilee year. So we're fully expecting the prophetic fulfillment of atonement day to go down in the Jubilee year. Sometime around the time when the trumpets are sounded in atonement day, 2024. But something real interesting about atonement day, as we read about in Leviticus 23, it actually starts on the ninth day of the month. So whereas we would have expected the prophetic fulfillment to take place somewhere around 2024, which is the eve of Atonement Day, when Atonement Day starts. But if it is to start on the ninth day at evening, that is 2023. So that's why I'm calling Atonement Day my first watch date for these events that we're talking about here. But that's not the only day. It's not even the one that I'm the most sure about. It's just the first. And that's why I wanted to hurry up and rush this video to get this information out. Um, the plan is, guys, the plan of the Illuminati is to trick everyone into believing that something else is happening other than what we read about over here in the epistle of the apostles that's why they have the feast days off in the year 2023 so that if this does go down on atonement day it will seem like just a random day but there are our feast days for the fall of the year 2023 we're supposed to be afflicting our souls on october the 25th let's go ahead and get this one up and get the ball rolling in, in these discussions around the epistle of the apostle um in this jubilee year um if you want to join the discussion you can do so down in the comment section and i'll see you down there make sure you subscribe so you can get the community posts it's where we put out a lot of information about the calendar and such go ahead and hit that like button and pray for us